who am I and what am I talking about? This is a, another Teach Meet takeover. I don't know if any of you have been coming to the other Teach Meets running through the day and also tomorrow, if you're back tomorrow. Um, my name is Danny Nicholson. I used to be a, a secondary science teacher. I'm now a freelance trainer. I work for various companies doing different bits of training. And the idea behind the Teach Meets is that we show things that are free um, to everybody that's, that's coming to bed. So this is actually a product called Inanima Alice. What I'll do, I have a blog that I run and I put things on the blog that I find useful. So the address for the blog is whiteboardblog.co.uk. I will put a copy of this presentation onto the whiteboard blog sometime over the weekend, probably Sunday. I'll be too knackered tomorrow. So when this goes up on the blog, if you want to have this with all the links and so on, it'll be up on the whiteboard blog for you to use. Um, and I think we've been filmed as well, so hopefully there'll be a link to it on Promethean Planet or um, one of the previous sites as well. There is also the Teach Me Takeover blog and the Teach Me blog. I would assume there's going to be links on there as well. It's kind of the plan. Um, so, in, in, my, in my blind panic, I was trying to get the trailer to work for Inanima Alice. So the best thing to do is to start with showing you what that is. Oh, we have a like that, don't we? Imagine a world where you have no friends. You live remotely. You keep moving around with your parents. Your only companion is your device and the character who keeps popping up on the screen. This is Alice's world. Home school until she was 14, Alice has never had a childhood friendship. So she talks to Brad on her device, and he talks back to her. They go on adventures. They make lists together. And whenever she's scared, he is always there for her. Do you have a friend like Brad? Right. If you want to see the trailer, here's the web address for Nanma Alice resources, you can get it on there. Um, what is Nanma Alice? It's basically a, an interactive online novel is the easiest way of describing it. Um, the story is about a little girl called Alice. She starts off as eight years old um, and she's eight in China with her parents. And then every story, there's ten chapters in the end. There's four chapters currently available on the website. And each chapter is kind of another year in Alice's life. And she moves around the world and there's various things that happen to her and various things happen to her parents, which um, you can create into a whole story. Into a whole story format. Um, each of the episodes gets more um, interactive and game-like. The idea is eventually Alice is going to become a, a world-renowned interactive designer and game designer and animator. So she um, ends up heading towards that direction. Um, it's written by um, a lady called Kate Pullinger and a, a chap called Chris Joseph who does all the artwork. So there is some, some quite high caliber people behind this kind of thing. There's a chap called Ian Harper that had the whole concept for this in the first place. Bottom line is this is a free online digital novel. You can download the resources. It's um, quite interactive. There's a lot of multimedia. There's a lot of sounds. Uh, you can interact with the story in various ways. And I'll pull up some scenes on this in a minute so we'll see how this works. If my internet connection lets me. So I'll have a, a, a deep breath for that in a second. One thing I think is quite useful about this, quite nice about it, it's not just available in English, you've got this available in quite a few different languages as well. So English, but also French and German, uh, Italian and Spanish. So there's a nice sort of crowbar into this for modern language teachers, which you can use this as a digital novel in a foreign language with your students as well. And also for English as a digital language, you can use the English version with it. The idea behind it is, um, the phrase being banned around now is transmedia, so it's sort of crossing all different types of media. So you can use this on your computer, you can use this on mobile devices, you can use this all over the place. And what we want to try and do is get students to use this as a starting point for their own story writing and their own creative writing. So if they start with the story of Alice and then we stop it at a certain point, the students will carry on the story and look at it um, from an English teacher point of view as, as a novel and how the sort of characters work and how stories work. But also they can take their own story and develop it further and use it as an ICT project as well if they want to. There's four chapters online at the moment and I, from what I understand there's plans to have ten in total. 
It starts off with Alice in China, uh, then she goes to Italy, and this is the second escape resort of Italy, which is quite nice, uh, then Russia, and then the current one, which is up there at the moment, is um, in the UK. So this hometown, it's uh, somewhere in, in Middle England, somewhere in, in the north, I think, is where I can gather from the look of the, the scenery. But I will hopefully just try and call up a, a little bit of it to see if, you, see if this works. I always get a bit twitchy when I try and use a live internet connection. So we may have to just hold hands and contact them. the guy in the cotton IT. I don't know. Hello. Hello. There we go. So if I pick Italy, we'll start there. If the little bar's going really slowly, I'll stop and move on. Uh, three, four, five. While that's coming down, I'll file up, I'll move on, and I hope that'll download. So there are different ways that you could use this in the classroom. There's, um, the first obvious thing is this is a nice example of digital novel. So if, if you're getting students to look at their own media and creating their own stories, you can use Digital Alice, or Inanimate Alice, as a, as a way of getting them into that. Looking at it as a, an author's point of view, so how they're using characters, how they're using storytelling, how they're using a different kinds of device. The multimedia and the interactivity is used really well. So it stops at certain points and you click on different parts of her. Alice has a little interactive pad she uses um, that develops over time. So almost, it's an iPad in name, but it looks like a little handheld device. So you can use that and click on that and access different things that Alice has been making. There's animations and puzzles she's doing. Let me just see how the download's going. Okay. Keep filling. Um, looking at Alice as a character, for English teachers, they can take a look at Alice and actually study her as a character and think about what her motivations are, how she's um, yeah, put yourself in her shoes. You're an eight-year-old girl in China, your parents have gone missing, what would you do? And you can look at her that way. You've got the ICT links because you can take the stories and I'll put you a, a web address soon which is a, a wiki which has got student work on. What the students are doing is taking Alice's story, putting it into PowerPoint and telling the story as a continuation. They're using it as their own multimedia. There's vision, uh, video and there's sound effects and there's some stories and music and so on. It's a very good, very good bit of work. Alice gets into quite a bit of trouble in various places. You've got PSHE and um, safety issues in there. You've got PS, uh, also actually, um, social studies. She's in different countries. Alice is in China in one episode. She's in Russia for another episode. And those countries are brought into it as well. So you think about bringing those, those issues into the classroom. You can talk about what would be like to live in China at the moment, what would be like to live in Russia at the moment. Um, as I said also, you've got the other languages. So if you're an MFL teacher and want to take a look at this, there's a German version, there's a French version. Spanish and Italian, so you can use it in those classrooms as a, just a, a, a novel in those languages. And again, you're hopefully engaging the students because um, kids these days are used to getting their media digitally, so you've got a different way of, of accessing some stories from the same old te uh, textbooks and such like. And also from a graphic design point of view as well, if you're doing multimedia and design, then looking at it in Anima Alice as a, a piece of design work and inspiring other work that kids are doing. This is taken from um, two teachers, I found this on the internet, and I'll give you the links in a bit, but it's the slide share presentation from the wiki. This is examples of how they use it in the classroom with, with students. So they're actually studying Alice as a piece of uh, digital text, and looking at the differences between reading a print piece of text, the difference between reading digital text, and why it might be more engaging for different readers, and, and why it might be more interesting in terms of using media, and pictures, and video, and, and animations. And also then looking at it as a piece of narrative text, and so they're studying it. And like you study a book, but we're studying a digital book as opposed to studying a, a normal, regular textbook. Um, likewise, looking at text structure and um, how these episodes are actually written. What happened after this point was the students then wrote their own stories. They'd pick a country, and Alice would go there, and they'd do a whole story based around Alice going to a different, different country. The address is down here, it's alisonfriends.wikispaces.com. If you go there, there's links to some really good lessons, lesson plans, lesson resources, and more importantly, examples of kids' work. I didn't really want to show that here, because that's pretty better for you to discover yourselves. But um, take a look at the wiki, there's a load of good stuff on there. So, give it a photograph of the addresses. <coughs> alisonfriends.wikispaces.com. Um, and you, 
I'll go through this quickly, but they asked, this is actually off the um, Neander Alice website, but ask the students what they thought of it. So you're getting things like, I like the story, I like the images, I like the sound effects. The fact it's multimedia and not just a static story does engage the readers a little bit more sometimes. In terms of support materials, the Inanimate Alice website has a load of stuff on it already. So inanimatealice.com, if you do forward slash education, there's a teacher's guide on there which you can download. There's also access to like a, a starter uh, PDF file with some interesting ideas for using Alice in the classroom. Um, both the three, just go to the website and download them. I think for the education pack, you just got to put your name and email address in so they, they can sort of contact you later if you want to, but the resource itself is free. The other thing as well is that Promethean Planet has in the Alice website materials on there, so resource materials. There is an example flip chart you can use, which I'll hopefully call up in a sec. There's also a support group and a user group on the Promethean Planet forums. If you are using it and want to talk to other people about your use and get some ideas, then the Promethean Planet website has got these resources on there for you. The Alice and Friends wiki I showed you just now, there's also, if you want to, a Facebook group, which Facebook's all the rage these days, so facebook.com slash inanimatealice, and again, a lot of the links to all these things that I'm mentioning, you can get through Facebook, and often these days, the first port of call is try Facebook first, and follow the links out from Facebook. Um, I think there's a Twitter, I don't know, who can tell us that we have on Twitter as well, we, we co they cover all bases. I'm going to just hope to see if that's loaded now. Hooray! Right. So I'll just show a couple of slides because I'm conscious of time. It may still go slow. Yes, it should be up there. One more go. 
If not, I'll do the next one for medium of mine. Okay, old school. Yeah, no, forget it. Right, move on. I've broken the whole thing I have, and it's only Friday. You can't do that. No, forget it. No. I'm looking at the clock, I'm, I'm out of time, so anyway, so there is a flip chart, you can download it, I'll put the link on the blog so you can download it for yourself if you have Active Inspire. And it basically takes you through, these are two sample screens, Alice's Passport, you can interact with that and take stamps in various places. There are um, post-it notes, you can ask Alice anything, the idea is that you drag these post-it notes up and write on there what you've learned about the character of Alice. So it's just interactive flip charts used with the class once they've watched the, the video and the story. But that's not quite working, so let's move on. Um, there are... <coughs> there's a section of the Promethean Planet website, some really good tips for teaching in Animal Alice. I couldn't find a link to it elsewhere. It's a really long, complicated web address with lots of slashes and dots. So I've shortened it to that. So if you go to bit.ly bit bit slash Alice Tips, it'll take you to it. If you've got a swanky new uh, phone, I'm trying this whole QR code thing this year. If you photograph that with your QR code reader, it'll take you straight there. Um, if that means nothing to you, don't worry, we'll move on. But the, the shiny thing there, if you click it, it should take you to the, the side. But Alice Tips, and there's a whole list of things that you can do in the classroom for this. And I'll put this link on the blog as well.